Gary, there's another one that uh, has come out. It's called The Jesus Dynasty by James Tabor. This is a fellow that's an archaeologist, University of North Carolina, works with Bart Ehrman there, and the fact is he's got a very interesting book about Jesus and the Jesus Dynasty. Gary, tell us about this. Well, unlike some of the other things that are coming out right now, James Tabor is a scholar. He's a University of Chicago grad, department head at, at UNC Charlotte. And uh, this book is an is a interesting mixture of ar archaeology, uh, exegetical work, some sociological distinctions, traveling here and there, putting pieces together, and and almost like a sleuth, you know, you're going to be kind of taken through this book to different uh, settings. I think some of the major claims in this book that are going to hit the the uh, TV and radio waves uh, are that. Uh, first of all, he is going to separate the early Christian tradition from a James and Mary, basically, family of Jesus tradition that goes this way, and then later, the other divergence is Paul. Now, Paul writes so many things in the New Testament, is so influential, and makes his way around so much of the Mediterranean world, he actually becomes the more influential of the two, and Paul's tradition kind of slams the door on the James, Mary, Jesus' family tradition. Yeah, in, in Jesus' dynasty, the fact is, is that, that uh, uh, he didn't say that he was God. You want to erect this dynasty, and he passes the baton to James. Right. It's, it's almost a genetic dynasty, hence the title of the book. Now, he's sure that Jesus died. Absolutely. So he contradicts uh, some of the other books we're going to talk about, but he's sure that Jesus died. Right. But then he says that the body was moved by and then he speculates who it was. He says, comes back to the mother of Jesus. Mary and some of the other ladies in particular move the body. And what gets them past Holy Saturday, so to speak, this day of despair and despondency, and uh, we thought he was the one who would save us from the Romans kind of view, is this rah-rah, rally the troops, uh, and the bloodline that he passes on. And then on the other side, here comes Paul later, and he wants to divinize Jesus. And so you have two tracks. Paul, the culprit, the, the, uh, you know, the pure tradition of Jesus' family and the corrupt tradition of Paul. Another one of the key themes in that book is that possibly, and he's careful to say could be, but he spends so much time on it, you get the idea, he thinks this, that Jesus has a father, and it's not Joseph. It's uh, a man named Pantera who is a Roman soldier and an acquaintance of Mary, who knows, um, was this uh, a rape? Was it a willing thing? He says, I don't know. We don't know how to put this in there. But he tracks a Pantera, a Roman soldier, up to Germany and says, we have his gravestone here, and kind of tracks him back to, to Sidon in the Middle East and says, uh, hey, you know what? When Jesus goes to Sidon and it says that it was a, he wanted to be quiet about this, guess what? Maybe he was going to see his father. So this whole father tradition, the Pantera thing, which, by the way, seems to me a very tenuous mixture of archaeological, here's a tomb with words, could be this, could be that, could be this city, and then it almost becomes, he, now he doesn't say this, but it almost becomes a could be, later it becomes a, well, sort of is, not quite, but sort of, but you're left with this, Jesus' father's name's Pantera, and when he visits Sidon, he's going to see his father. You know, so it's this, this kind of secret theme. We're right back now to our phone callers. Next up is Steve listening in Tyler, Texas, also on Bot Radio. Hi, Steve. Hey, Hank, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Good, good. Hey, uh, I'm reading a book by James Tabor called Paul and Jesus. Hey, and I wasn't familiar with James Tabor. The book is quite an intriguing concept. So... He proposes in the book, because of the timing of Paul's letters being written before when the Gospel letters were written, that the accounts in the Gospels of the Last Supper were quoting from Paul's letters, primarily, I think, in 1 Corinthians, um, especially the, the talk about the body and the blood and how that's not at all a part of the Jewish culture, the idea of drinking blood. Um, so I was just curious to get your thoughts there and, and, and just kind of hear what you have to say. 
Yeah, well, uh, first of all, James Tabor is an unreliable guide to the historical Jesus because, uh, as you sort of allude to in the prologue to your question, he's driving a wedge between the teachings of Paul and the teachings of the other apostles, and this is completely unwarranted. I mean, the Bible itself emphatically precludes that possibility. Um, and, and, and I think, too, that many people today who seek to drive this wedge between uh, the teachings of Paul and the apostles or undermine the historical Jesus in some way uh, suffer from not being able to read the Bible in the sense in which it's intended. Uh, when we take communion, uh, we don't drink blood. What we do is remember... Uh, through communion, the broken body of Jesus Christ, the shed blood of Jesus Christ for the complete remission of sins. So the blood of Jesus Christ is emblematic of the death of Jesus Christ or the suffering of Jesus Christ, which, by the way, was not just physical, uh, but metaphysical as well for the complete redemption or atonement of the sins of humanity. Correct. Yeah, it's precisely my thoughts as well. I mean, is, is there any validity to uh, his claim of the, kind of the timing of Paul's letters? Uh, he says several years before the writing or the, the pinning of Mark's gospel. Uh, yeah, could be. Uh, it c- could be. I mean, all, I mean, the one thing that we know for certain is that all of the epistles uh, that Paul wrote, and he wrote two thirds of the New Testament epistles were completed prior to the time that Jerusalem and the temple were destroyed in AD 70. In fact, I think that we can make a very compelling case that all of the Bible, including uh, the book of Revelation, Contra Tabor, uh, was completed prior to the destruction of Jerusalem or the temple. Uh, it, It would be absolutely inconceivable that the most apocalyptic of Christ's claims would have been fulfilled, the destruction of the temple and, and Jerusalem, without uh, the, the, the biblical writers drawing attention to it.